Hello, everyone, and welcome to a short video on our own devices. I'm Jean Messier, and this is a very special episode because for the first time on this channel, I'm covering an item sent to me by a viewer. So the awesome Timothy Zatara sent me this little box, which, while it might look rather nondescript, contains something really, really cool. These are called Sleeve Jointing Self-Soldering Number 3, and these were developed and issued by Special Operations Executive, or SOE, during the Second World War. Now, SOE was a secret organization formed at the behest of Prime Minister Winston Churchill in June 1940, shortly after the evacuation of the British Expeditionary Force from the beaches of Dunkirk. And it had the rather awesome mandate of setting Europe ablaze. So SOE agents would be parachuted into occupied Europe and later the Far East, and working either alone or more often than not with local resistance organizations, they were to conduct acts of espionage, reconnaissance, sabotage, and subversion. And to this end, SOE developed a wide range of specialized equipment, ranging from the relatively mundane, such as special explosives and detonators for taking out railroad tracks and suppressed weapons, such as the well rod pistol, to the truly exotic, including explosive coal for taking out locomotive boilers and something called caco lube, which was a rubber packet, originally a condom, filled with emery powder. And this was designed to be dropped into the oil tank of a vehicle whereupon the hot oil would dissolve the rubber, releasing the powder into the lubrication system and destroying the engine and the vehicle beyond repair within a few kilometers of travel. And among all of these creative gadgets were these. So these were designed to join together the leads coming off of a blasting cap to set off an explosive charge to the firing wires connected to a blasting machine. And to learn more about those fascinating devices, please check out my video on the subject, link in the description. So these consist of a little copper tube with flared ends to make it easier to feed a wire in either side with a slug of solid solder in the middle. And wrapped around it is a pyrotechnic composition which is set off by this match head here. And this is a safety style match composition meaning it is split into two parts. One part is on the sleeve itself and consists of potassium chlorate with a binder while the other half is the striking surface on the box and consists of red phosphorus. So what you do, according to the little instruction sheet that comes in the box, is you strip off a short section of insulation from both wires that you wish to join. You shove that into either end of the sleeve, and then using the box, you strike the match head, whereupon the pyrotechnic composition will ignite, heat up, melt the solder, and join the two wires. And I know that you're screaming at the screen right now, stop yammering, actually set one of these off. Well, ask and ye shall receive. Let's actually fire one of these up and see if it still works. So I have two sections of copper wire here with the sleeve in the middle held in some alligator clips and I have a section of floor tile here to stop the dripping solder from ruining my table. So let's see how this works. This actually doesn't take a lot of pressure, uh, just a light tap with the striking surface. And as you can see, this burns without much of a visible flame, which is very useful if you're trying to set up an explosive charge under the cover of darkness. And indeed, SOE also issued a set of fusee matches of the exact same composition, which were used to set off safety fuse and other pyrotechnic devices without giving away your position or ruining your night vision. And then as it burns, you can see the solder starting to bubble out the end and solidify. And according to the instruction sheet, what you're supposed to do while the solder is still soft is grab the wires by the insulation, of course, and push them deeper into the sleeve, causing them to cross over and form a more secure connection. But as you can see from this example that I've already set off, even with the wires just pushed into either end, this forms a very secure connection. And then once the joint is made, what you're supposed to do is take a pair of pliers and break off all the remaining slag from the pyrotechnic compound, leaving a bare copper sleeve and then insulate that so that it doesn't short out. So just really neat little device and a really cool idea. So as you can imagine, given that these were developed in secret for use by a clandestine organization, there really isn't a whole lot of specific information available about these. Although examples that you can find for sale online are dated as late as the 1960s, meaning that these were considered a good enough idea to remain in service for several decades after the Second World War. There also isn't any information available on what's actually inside this pyrotechnic composition, though I can make an educated guess. You see, there is a very common chemical reaction that is used in chemistry classes to demonstrate exothermic reactions, which is the reaction between iron 
and sulfur. And this mixture is actually so volatile that you have to be very careful while mixing it because the friction can cause it to go off. And typically the mixture is ignited in a laboratory setting using a red hot glass rod. And as you can see from this example, the two reactions are nearly identical. And a further piece of evidence supporting this theory is the strong smell of sulfur given off by these sleeves. Indeed, the reaction between sulfur and iron produces ferrous sulfide, which is this black crusty material, and the gas sulfur dioxide, which would account for the smell. On the other hand, as I said, the mixture of sulfur and iron is very volatile and would carry with it the significant risk of accidental ignition. However, in order to make these sleeves suitable for combat use, the pyrotechnic mixture would have to be mixed with some sort of binder to hold it together and waterproof it. And this would theoretically have the effect of increasing the activation energy for the reaction while keeping it low enough to be set off by a simple match head. Now, if any of you know exactly what is inside of these things, please sound off in the comments. I would love to hear your theories or explanations. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much to Timothy Zatara for sending these in. I really appreciate it. These are super, super cool and just up my alley for this channel. Uh, one of my favorite parts of running this channel is the huge and very supportive community that has grown up around it. So thank you to everyone who watches and comments and likes and sends me suggestions and actual artifacts to cover. I uh, really couldn't do this without you. Anyway, I'll see you next time on another video where I'll have a look at yet more fascinating devices just like this one. Until then, I'm Jean Messier from Our Own Devices. Have a great day.